This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on SABC3 at the start of a brand new day. Thanks very much for joining us. Exciting news right now. You'll remember that last year, Grade 11 uh, Northwest learner Farida Kaji Lottering stunned adjudicators at the ESCOM Science Fair with her 3D printed prosthetic arm that operates via mind control. Now, she won gold and was subsequently able to compete in this year's Taiwan International Science Fair, where she won second place in the category of engineering. Wow. And now, in matric, Farida is still developing her prosthetic arm and she joins us on the line via video call to tell us all about it. Farida, a very good morning to you. Good morning everyone, I'm so glad to be on the show. We're so excited to have you Farida, this is truly exciting. But we're going to start off with your passion for science. You've been entering the ESCOM Science Expo ever since you were in grade 5. and But you've also maintained an interest in wanting to help people through science. Can you please tell us more about this goal? Um, so I found out about the ESCOM Expo when I was in grade 5 and at first I wasn't allowed to enter because I was too young. But then somehow I got my teacher to agree and she let me enter the school's round. And that's when I did my first project. But my idea around science was kind of getting ideas and inventions that help the world and help people. So tell us then about this idea for you to invent a mind-controlled prosthetic arm. Take us back to that time when the idea came about in your mind and you thought, this is the one. So I started thinking about the problems I face in my town alone. And one of the problems were uh, plastic waste. And the other problem was the amount of amputees in my town that live without prosthetics. So they choose to live without prosthetics because they already have a huge amount of medical bills on their name and they are in debt and so on. So it's not a financially a wise decision to get a prosthetic. Mm. And that's when I decided to join the two together and create Project Glimpse. I love it so oh, much. She amazing. has addressed three issues with this prosthetic arm, and that is the waste of plastic that goes unused, and secondly, to give access to people that don't have access to this kind of help, yeah. and also at a cost-efficient you know, price, which is incredible. But can you please talk us through how it works exactly? It just uses like uh, four different equipment. It's an Arduino Uno, which acts as the motherboard, a servo arm, which makes the hand contract and relax. Mm -hmm. And I have a control system, which is basically an app that I developed by myself. And then I have the headpiece. So this is the headpiece. And then you're just gonna put it on and the clip on your ear. The only downfall about the project is you have to walk around with the headpiece all the time. <laughs> but I think it looks a bit cool. Yeah, so it's okay. <laughs> Absolutely. And then here's the arm. That is such a cool arm. And then I created the app that you can use to set it to your preferences. So if you want to relax more or concentrate less or however you want it, you can set it. And then all you have to do is connect the arm um, to the uh, software mm -hmm. and then you just start concentrating. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Astounding. Mm. So uh, tell me about how, how developed or prevalent is this kind of mind control technology in the world currently? So my prosthetic is actually one of, its, one of a kind. So mm. the mind control technology or the EEG neurofeedback technology already existing is very invasive. So, for example, if you are rich enough, if you are wealthy enough and you have the funds and you want a bionic prosthetic, you need to go for surgery. And then a chip or your nerve endings will be connected to the prosthetic. Mm. And that also then will cost more medical mm. bills because now it's a surgery. The chip either goes behind your neck or if it's a stump, it will, the nerve endings will be connected with little... Um, impulse spots mm. and then it will link to the prosthetic so you've got now more medical bones now mine is it's simple you just get the prosthetic 
and you put the headset on and it works. Mm. So I've basically eliminated all of the errors that other scientists and innovators have faced. I've limited it, all of them. Wow. I, we, we've just got a call from, from MIT, Farida, and they're waiting for your application right now. And <laughs> this is actually, absolutely incredible. On that note, Kat, I want to ask her what her future plans are right now. Like, have you received any interested parties reaching out to you, you know, to support you as well? Um, no. <laughs> no <What>? one. <laughs> No universities, <laughs> no no one wants to buy, <laughs> nothing like that. And I can't take it further because I, I don't have the knowledge or the skills to mm. carry on. I need professionals to help out or someone to buy it over and then do the job that it's supposed to do. Because right now I've done it and it mm. is safe in my eyes. You, you already took what was an incredibly challenging situation and you turned it into this project. And I have no doubt that uh, those who will see this segment will be inspired, will be encouraged to help you out. Somebody from the Department of Arts and Science must yeah, come out and help Farida out and uh, help her make her dream come true. And in doing so, help so many people. Congratulations to you, Farida. And keep working at this wonderful passion mm. that you have. Keep researching, keep learning. You are going to change the world you have already. Thank you so much. Wow. What a um, wonderful, wonderful young lady. Also in the spirit and in light of Youth Month, she's doing incredible things. At just 18 years old, Farida's already leaving a positive trail behind her. I'm ready to invest. Oh, right now. I need to speak to my financial <laughs> advisor. I just need to make a quick call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.